In this video, I'm going to cover hypothesis testing for the difference between two dependent means using the TI-84. Now, if you are looking for independent means, I have another video covering this, covering that, but this video only covers dependent means. Okay? So here I have the steps for hypothesis testing for the difference between two dependent means. The first thing you need to do is state your null and alternative hypotheses. Now, they are slightly different than they are when you're looking at dependent. When you are looking at dependent, you're going to have two um, variables in here, mu1 and mu2, where mu1 is the mean of the first, um, the first set and mu2 is the mean of the second one. However, when you're looking at dependent sets, you're going to use mu sub d. And um, the mu sub d represents the difference between the two means. Okay. And it's always going to be um, compared to zero. So that zero will always be the number in your um, null and alternative hypotheses. Okay. You're going to put the, um, the two sets in the list section of your calculator, and you'll find the difference between the two. Then you will use a t-test on that single list that represents the difference. So it's just a regular t-test on this single set here. Then you'll find your p-value using that t-test and compare it um, to alpha to determine if you're going to reject or fail to reject HO. And then you'll use the following chart to determine how you're going to word your final answer. So let's look at an example. So a tutoring service claims that they will improve their students' SAT math scores with just one tutoring session. The following table shows test scores of eight random students that receive tutoring at a 1% level of significance, is there enough evidence to conclude that the student's SAT math scores have improved? So remember what we're going to do is we're going to, where's my mouse? Okay, there it is. We're going to look at the difference between the two. And we're always going to compare it to zero. So this is always going to be the same. The thing you need to figure out is um, what variables need to go in here and what the claim is and um, whether the claim is the null or alternative hypothesis. So they claim that the scores are improved. So if you have set 1 minus set 2, this one is the smaller one and this one is the bigger one. So they're claiming that you should get a negative answer. So it should be less than 0. Okay, so they're saying that the mean, the difference between the means is less than zero. So this is their claim. So this is the one part that's very important to make sure you get set up correctly when you're doing these, that you're looking for if it's set one minus set two, and um, in this example, if the second numbers are bigger, then this should be negative. For example, if the first number was one and the second number was two, one minus two is negative one, so less than zero. Okay, so since this is less than zero, the opposite of that is greater than or equal to zero. Also, I knew this was the alternative hypothesis because there was no equality symbol in it, and this is the null hypothesis. Okay, now um, these two guys always come together. Um, this guy is greater than with an equal to symbol, and then the alternative is less than with no equal to symbol. Okay. So now what I want to do is enter these values into L1 and these values into L2 in my calculator. So I do that by hitting STAT, then EDIT. If you have stuff in here like I do, you want to highlight the column the header L1, press CLEAR, and ENTER. So I'm going to put these numbers in the first column, 445. I think I can do it with a gun. Okay, so that last one was L9, so we're good. Okay, let's go over here. Okay, once you get all the values in, then you want to go over to L3 
and highlight the column header and you're going to make this say L1 minus L2. You get L1 by doing second and then the number one because notice above the number one is in a blue L1 then minus L2. Now this column has calculated the difference between each one, um, each value for you. Okay, now I want to perform a t-test on only this column. So I go to stat, test, and then number two is t-test. I want to make sure I highlight data. That's telling the calculator that all the information I'm looking at is in a list in my calculator. I want to make this say zero because that is asking for what is the number inside your hypotheses. So the number is zero. And this list needs to say L3 because that's where we have the values for all the differences. Frequency, we're just going to leave it at one because we're assuming that everything in the list occurs with the same frequency that it's listed at. Then I need to highlight um, the alternative hypo the sign from the alternative hypothesis. So in this case it was less than. And then I highlight calculate, press enter. Oh, um, when you highlighted this, you needed to make sure after you highlight it, you press enter. Then you highlight calculate and press enter. And we get P is equal to 0.396. So now we want to compare P to alpha. Our alpha in this case is 0 0.01. So P is greater than alpha. So that means we fail to reject HO. Okay. Whenever P is greater than alpha, you fail to reject HO. Whenever P is less than alpha, you reject HO. The way I always remember it is if it's greater than, it's the one with more words. If it's less than, it's the one with less words. Okay. So we fail to reject HO. Now I need to figure out how I'm going to word my final answer, and that's using this flowchart up here. Okay. So the first thing I need to ask myself, is the claim HO? In this case, it was not. So no. Did we reject HO? No, we did not. So we say there is not enough evidence to support the claim. Okay, so um, you might want to say more than that. You might want to say that that scores are improved on one tutoring session. You might also want to write in there somewhere um, about what level of significance you used, but I personally find this sufficient. Okay. A diet pill manufacturer claims that their new miracle pill will help users lose weight after one month of continued use. The following table shows the before and after weights of 10 randomly selected participants. At a 1% level of significance, is there enough evidence to conclude that the pill helps loser, users lose weight? So the first thing I need to do is figure out what my HO and HA are. So it says that they claim that it helps them lose weight. So that means, um, you know, if we look at the first set, set two, if we take the difference of it, this one is the bigger one and this one is the smaller one, so a bigger number minus a smaller number is going to be greater than zero. Okay, so what they're claiming is that the difference is greater than zero and because there's no, um, they're not saying that they'll maintain their weight or lose weight, then it will just be a greater than symbol. So mu d is greater than zero, that's our claim. Now because there's no any uh, there's no equality symbol in this, that means it's definitely HA. HO is going to have mu D and 0 in it as well, but um, since this one is pointing to the right, this one will point to the left and it'll have an equality symbol underneath it. Okay, so now all I need to do is go to my stat, edit, and clear out all this stuff I have from before. Clear, enter. Now you can see here that you have L4, L5, and L6, so if you wanted to keep, um, 
you know, the first three and then put these in four, five, and six, you can do that. I just like to clear it out. I probably should start saving them a little bit. So 145, 185. Oops. So that was number 10. All right, now let's go over here. It's very important that when you put these into the calculator that you put them in the exact same position. Like if 145 is in the first row, then 140 also needs to be in the first row. So 185 was 30. Okay, I'm on number four. You can also tell which value you're on by this number right here. This says I'm in the fifth spot. Okay. Now what I want to do is go up to L3 and I want to hit second L1 minus second L2. And then I'll go ahead and populate these um, differences for me. So I'm going to perform a t-test on this column only. So I go to stat, test, number two is t-test. Data is already highlighted, zero is already there, L3 is already there, frequency is already there. The only thing I need to change is what my alternative hypothesis is. So I highlight that, press enter, then I go down to calculate, press enter. So my p-value is it written in scientific notation. This means that you have to move the decimal point four units this way. Okay, so um, that means that there are three zeros between the decimal point and the number. So point one two three nine one five. So p is definitely less than alpha. Okay, because alpha was point zero one. So that means I reject HO. Okay, so um, now we need to determine what we're going to say about this based on rejecting HO. And we use this is the claim HO. No. Nope. Do you reject HO? Yes. So you say there is enough evidence to support the claim. One bacon fan claims that eating bacon every day will have no effect on blood pressure. You randomly select seven participants to eat bacon for three months and measure their blood pressure. Okay, so for he's claiming that it has no effect, so he's saying that the difference between these two sets, there isn't one. So if there's no difference, that means the difference is equal to zero. So he's claiming that the difference between the means is equal to zero. That's his claim. So that means this is our null hypothesis. This is our alternative hypothesis. So the alternative hypothesis would then be not equal to zero because that's the opposite of equal to. Okay. So I need to put these values into my L1 and L2. So I'll put this one into L1, this one into L2. Edit. Let's clear all this stuff out by highlighting it, pressing clear and enter. Be careful when you delete these. I've seen people um, just delete the whole column before. And you have to go and change the settings to get it the, the heading back. Okay, so I'm going to put these in. Eighty nine, one on four, 
118 and 112. Okay. Actually, it says select 7, but we have 10, so let me cross that out. Sorry. Um, the There was just a typo in this problem. Okay, so that was my 10th one. Let's click. Let's go here, 98, 22, 26, oops, not 37, 97, 100, 10. Okay, so now I have all my values in. Let me fix that one. Okay, so I want to make this say L1 minus L2. Okay, now I just need to do a t-test on this. Okay. All of this should be correct except for the last piece. I need to highlight the alternative hypothesis which is not equal to and then go down to calculate, enter. So P is equal to 0.219. So P is greater than alpha So, um, I fail to reject. HO. Okay, so we'll go back up to our little flowchart here. Is the claim HO? Yes. Do I reject HO? No. There is not enough evidence to reject the claim. doing eating bacon daily eating bacon daily will affect have no effect excuse me on blood pressure Okay, so the big thing to make sure that you set up correctly is you set up your null and alternative hypotheses correctly, that you know that if you're doing a less than one or an equal to or a greater than one. Also, um, you know, make sure that you only do a t-test on L3. There, you will never use z-test on these, it's always a t-test. Okay.